UFOs are real, burgeoning and not going away. I am your intrepid host, Ellie Marzulli. Welcome to a, uh, another episode of UFO Update. Very special guest today, uh, Karen Wilkinson. She's an author. Uh, she's also an abductee, and I think you'll find what she has to say uh, extremely interesting. And for the time that we live in, this is really important. So we'll get into that. But first, a word from our trusted sponsor. Folks, L.A. Marzilli, we have a new product from the folks at BioTrust. I'm going to give this baby a try. Look, I've got stubborn belly fat. A lot of you out there have the same problem. Support balance, glucose uptake, and metabolism is a health in healthy individuals. Um, this is pretty cool. Support normal insulin activity in healthy individuals. I have not yet tried this. I'm getting on it. Uh, I will report back to you. We, we try all the stuff that our sponsors give us. Look, I'll be honest with you. I've got some stubborn belly fat. I would love to see it go away. So I'm going to give this a shot. Anyway, here's a further word from our sponsor. Excess belly fat has been deemed the most dangerous fat of them all as it's linked to so many health issues. The reason being, excess belly fat grows deep in the abdominal cavity and puts pressure on some of the body's most vital organs. That's one of the reasons why myself, along with so many people, are beginning to turn to this amazing new substance, which is thoughtfully formulated with science-backed ingredients that promote reduced fat storage. Help to speed up the breakdown of fat, support weight management, reduce cravings, and boost metabolism. Folks, the best part I love is that you can get 51% off for the rest of the month or until they sell out, whichever comes first. Get yours now by going to trimwithla.com. Once again, that's trimwithla.com. Trimwithla.com. I'm going to give this 30 days. I'll report back to you, and we'll see what it does. Karen, thanks so much for joining me. Appreciate it. And... Uh, um, we, we met basically in Dallas, uh, pre COVID, I think it was 2019, if I'm not mistaken, either 2019 or 20, it was really close to either right around COVID or just before COVID. I can't well, remember. COVID, I, I mean, that. March was every, everything was blown up in March and that's when yeah. I hear the, I think it was 2019, but you know, I can go back and look at yeah. the, um, you know, at the, at the film, but, uh, you came in and I'd never met you before and you, um, started to talk about your. Uh, experience as an abductee, and it was extremely unnerving. I mean, I've heard this before, so it was nothing new to me, but it, it was visceral in the sense that, you know, I'm talking with a woman that, you know, that's been through this. I've never been through it. I don't want to go through it. And nobody out there, if you think that these are friendly ETs from Zeta Reticuli, you are sadly mistaken. So in the background, we see your book, Stolen Seed, Evil Harvest, and I'm, I'm really proud to publish that book. Folks, if you have not picked up a copy, check it out. We're, we're going to run a special here. So when you buy Karen's book, you'll get my book, UFO Disclosure, completely free. You need to read both of the books because, nice yeah, that one right there. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> and what's important about this is it's, you know, this thing is coming down. Congress is talking about it, and we've got the answers. So, Karen, Sort of give us a thumbnail sketch. I mean, I don't want to give away the farm here, but you were taken at six years old, six, Eight five or six. Then, yeah. Yeah. It was early as I can remember. Uh, really quick. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor that you published this book for me and to have your friendship and your support means the world. Thank you. Um, yeah, this, you know, I really felt God sent me to you to speak to you. I didn't plan to speak to anyone about this, but God put it on my heart and then he put it on my heart to write. And, um, you know, and I wasn't sure why I, I really feel now that I know why, because this is happening to so many people. I was taken from my earliest memories. I probably, I can't recall as the earliest time I was taken because I don't remember a time when I wasn't being taken, wow. but I do know that I was afraid of members of my father's family because they looked 
they reminded me as a very small child, probably two or three years old, we were at a graduation and they kept trying to hand me off to them and I would scream bloody murder because they looked so much like these Nordic entities I had already encountered as a, as a tiny little kid. Wow. And I, I couldn't explain that, you know, and, and when you start so early, when that, something like that starts such an early time in your life and at that point in time, there were no words for me to tell anyone what was happening. I kept saying, the little guys, the ones that come and get me, right. they keep bothering me, they keep taking me. No one understood. You know, they're like, is something happening at school by that point? You know, things like that. But no, it was terrifying to happen. And and I really felt it was important to get this message out so that people understand a couple of things. One, you're not alone. And two, you know, these entities have the same creator we do, and they answer to the same creator Amen. we do. Amen. And they have to listen when you call on God and when you call on Jesus, they hear you, they listen, God is there for you and you can stop these things. And that's the most important point that I want to get across with this book. You know, you you became sort of the center of uh, number four in our UFO series on abductions, along with Al Matthews and Emil Jerk and uh, Angela Beckman. So, you know, four people, two men, two women, all of you were taken at some point. Al, Al and Emil were more like you, not so much Angela that we know about, but Al and Emil were taken just like you were at a very young age. So there are people out there, well-meaning people, good people, good-hearted people, but they're insisting that all of this is delusion, that it, it's in your head, that it really, really isn't happening. Speak to that. I don't want to dwell yeah. too long on that, but yeah. we need to address that. We do, because I probably speak to no less than one more person every day who can say to me, I could have written that book. The same things have happened to me throughout my whole life. So many people this has happened to. We have the physical and emotional scars to prove it. Mm -hmm. And we all have the same or similar story. And to then for someone to come along and accuse our pain and our suffering as being a false hood as being a delusion that's victim shaming i wouldn't dare ever do that to someone who had suffered some sort of a tragic happening or a tragic loss or something terrible that had happened to them i think that's horrible and it just breaks my heart for all the people i've spoken with because so many people are afraid to come forward i know, I know. and they suffer every day because there's no one to talk to and that's terrible. And then there's other, there's people out there that are on top of that, just pushing them down and telling them to basically shut up. You're just, you know, it's delusional. That's horrible. It's painful. And it adds to the pain and it adds to the sorrow and it adds to the mental anguish. And it's, it's, it's horrifying. And of course, you know, from, from my position, from our position, we look at scripture, we go back to scripture in the biblical prophetic narrative, and we know from Daniel chapter 2, verse 43, their seed will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not cleave to them. Now we can do, you know, the Texas two-step, the Texas two-step till the cows come home on this thing. It is, it says what it, it means what it says and says what it means. I mean, their exactly. seed, who were they, first of all? Their seed will mingle with the seed of men. The, we're talking about the fallen ones. It's like the days of Noah. They're mingling right. the seed, but there's no marriage contract like there was in Genesis 6. They took wives. All that's gone. They All they're interested in, and I remember talking to the late Chuck Missler about this, you know, what about the hybrids? And Chuck said, and I've talked about this, you know, again, numerous times, but Chuck just looked at me without missing a beat and said, Satan's out number two to one. He's building an army. And that's, you know, it, you're sort of taken aback by that. And, and this is what people don't get that have this truncated view of the supernatural that will say things like, well, angels can't procreate. Oh, yes, they can. You know, we'll, and then they'll go, well, we'll be like the angels. Well, that we're not given in marriage like the angels are when we're on the other side. But that doesn't mean that our, um, our sexual organs are somehow airbrushed out or we're no longer with us. I don't know what it's like, but I'm, I'm telling you right now, angels can procreate. And of course, this is one of the lines that they're not supposed to do. Um, but this is why Genesis 6 is so important. Genesis 3.15 is the gateway to it all. Uh, their seed will mingle with the seed of men, Daniel chapter 2. But Genesis 3, you know, I mean, there it is staring at us that your seed, the seed of the dragon, the seed of Satan will be at war, the seed offspring with the offspring of the woman. And that sets up the biblical prophetic narrative. So I want to talk to you. Because the last time we were talking about this, um, I asked you, what was it like going through the window? 
And, and this is where some of these people, well, it's all delusional. It's all in your head because that can't possibly happen. And, and my retort to that is what about the angel that pops into Peter's jail cell? So is that delusional too? I don't think so. Tell us about that when you're, when you're taken and levitated off the bed and tell us about that. Right. In a, in a typical, when I would be taken, generally, if I was awake during the process of being taken out of my room, because usually it was at night and I would normally be in bed, there's a point at which I would be levitated off the bed and up to the ceiling or out through a window. And the details are so clear of being right up to the ceiling and everything I could see on the ceiling. The details of the screen, whether it was the fact that the screens aren't actually little squares because every one of those little meshes has a little bend or a twist or something in it. And as I would get close to the ceiling or to the window, I would feel a change come over my body mm -hmm. and almost like a vibration. I can't explain it because it doesn't happen to us in this way we live. But it was like a vibration and it felt like I was just separating into a million bazillion little pieces, almost like ball bearings. And my body was somehow oh, wow. separating and coming back together. And I know that's really hard to understand to someone who hasn't been through it. But I have yet to speak to another abductee about that who doesn't say, yes, that's exactly what it was like for me, too. And there's so much relief in that for me because... It's so, you know, it's comforting to have other people who can share in an experience, even though it's a horrible experience, at least you can share in comforting each other. But to do that, it just messes with your mind. You know, you're, here you are going through a window and going through a ceiling and seeing things get further and further away. And, you know, it, it doesn't make sense to us. But they, like you said, they manipulate time, space, energy and matter in ways we can't understand. Right. And people keep trying to fit these entities into our universe. They don't fit in our universe. They weren't made for our planet, our universe. And so what they do when they're here doesn't fit either. And, and I think that's where some things get lost is everyone's like, well, that's not possible. I'm like, well, it is possible if you look at who we're dealing with. And, of course, we're dealing with the fallen ones. We're dealing with yes. the, the bad guys. I mean, there's nothing good about you know, what, what these entities are up to. Um, yep. Let's circle back to the breeding program. Um, and I, I mean this with all due respect, but essentially, like many abductees, just like Al. Al was taken numerous times. Sperm is taken from Al. He's been, and he talks about it. I was violated. I wet my pants. It, the, whole, the whole deal. I mean, you're kidnapped, you're and then you're put back, whatever. They don't care. This is evil. Yep. This is absolutely, there's nothing good about it. At all, no. in my opinion, nothing. So, you know, you were a breeder. You were you were taken. You were... Well, let me ask you something before I ask that question. Mm -hmm. By any chance, are you RH negative blood? I am O negative. Okay. Because I came up with something recently. I want to talk to you about this before yeah. I get into the breeding thing. And, and many of us are because O negative blood, I can give blood to anyone. There you go. But I can't receive blood from anyone. Wow. So my blood can be used in many ways and... 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 Um, there's something there. There's there really is. Something like that. And, and, and I've spoken to a lot of other abductees who also are O negative. And what's, what I find interesting about this, the reason why they're, you're picked, you know, oh, there's a reason for it. They're singling this out because it makes their job easier. Um, now, that's conjecture, you know, on our part, but it's also based on lots of research. You're well, singled out because of the blood type. The one child of mine, and I won't say who, that was taken also is my only other O negative child. Wow. So, and the, those of us in my family lineage who, you know, I've now realized the stories they were telling that didn't make sense. Oh my gosh, this now happened to these sense. elder members of my family as well. They're the O negatives as well. So I was grateful to learn that the rest of my children were not O negative. Yeah, I've got positives and negatives in there. But yeah, I, there's really something to that. Absolutely. So you're, what, 19, 20, the first time you're impregnated by them? Yeah, I was 21. Okay. 21. And this, I mean, I, I've heard this 30 years ago. I actually wrote about it in the Nephilim trilogy. I mean, as a ufologist, and yeah, the, but the first time I heard it was very unnerving. 
and you sit there and you go, you know, seriously, why is this happening? Um, and, and people, you know, people write me and go, why would God allow this? And my retort is, why does God allow Auschwitz? I mean, you know, right? Because we live in a fallen world. We live in a fallen world. That's that's the answer. So you're taken, you're impregnated, but you don't know you. you that's that's blocked out. Yeah. So yeah. You, you know you, you're pregnant, and you go, "Wow, I'm pregnant." You're married yeah. at the time, so you're yes. rejoicing. Tell oh, us what. I'm tell so us, happy. So tell us what happens next. Yeah. So I am so excited. It was my first pregnancy. Um, I was so excited. I went to the doctor. You know, at that point, it was at least six weeks along. Um, and and at that point, we didn't have these easy home pregnancy tests. So you had to go get a blood test and then you had to get a prescription for prenatal vitamins and keep going and getting checked. And so I'd been to the doctor a few times and um, confirmed pregnancy. And then I started to feel very bad one night. And by about three o'clock in the morning, I think it was three or four in the morning, I woke my husband up and I said, we need to go to the hospital. Something feels wrong. But I hadn't passed anything. Right. I was afraid I was going to lose the baby. So we went to the hospital. And, you know, the doctors then weren't all connected via computers and things like that. So I go to a hospital, not my doctor's office, because it's the middle of the night. And um, they check. I'm still pregnant because you can run a blood test. Okay. So the first thing they do are, you know, check that. They look, do a Doppler, no heartbeat, ultrasound. They can't see a baby in my uterus. And um, so they do what's called a DNC, which is where they dilate you, and then they go and they clean out the uterus to get out any materials that are in there to bring the baby out if it's, if it's in there. Um, and uh, my uterus was clean. There was no fetal tissue. Had I had an miscarriage at home, there would be something left in there right. and there was nothing. And there, and then that, that's when they look at me, they're like, are you sure you were pregnant? I'm like, you, you can check with my doctor. And at that point they knew, you know, that someone at going in had done a test. So, you know, and they couldn't make sense of it. And it, another time when it happened, the same thing happened. So they went up to look in my fallopian tubes. They thought, well, maybe the baby's stuck like a tubal pregnancy, right. you know, all kinds of crazy things. Eventually, I stopped going in because it was so painful physically and emotionally and expensive that it wasn't worth it, you know, um, because the emotional pain associated with not having closure, not knowing, did I have a boy or a girl? Where did my baby go? Right. You know, why can't I mourn this child, m memorialize this child? You know, that baby is your baby from the second it's conceived. Wow. And you love that baby from the second it's conceived. For a mother and a father, that's the most joyous thing in the world. So it's heartbreaking. And then to have people question it and question you. And and I still have people question that when I talk, tell about this. And that's okay. They, they're Everyone's entitled to question whatever they'd like. But this is my truth, and this is what happened to me. And that pain is real. And the loss of those babies was real. If you were the only person coming forward and saying this, it'd be one thing. But we have, that's why there's four people in our film. That's why you wrote the book. But as a ufologist, I, I, I just started using that term fairly recently because I the kind of a light bulb. Oh, I got some of ufologists. So what the heck, you right? <laughs> you know, you think so? You so, definitely are. Yeah. So it's like, okay, um, this is what we're looking at. It's unnerving. But... And I want you to address this. Recently, in the halls of Congress, Anna uh, Paulina Luna stated on the record that we need to listen carefully what David Grush is saying, the whistleblower, because Grush is saying that these are not extraterrestrial. They are interdimensional. That, Karen, that's our wheelhouse. You know that. That's oh, what that hit home. Your I'm thoughts. Like, that just hit home with me. I'm like... All right. They know so much more than anyone is saying. And she's trying to just carefully ease a little bit of it out there. Is it meant to, um, was it on purpose? Right. Um, most likely to start giving people that thought process and go have people go down that road that we've already been down. I mean, I've been in the presence of these beings. They are not just, you know, they're interdimensional. They, they aren't from Zeta Reticuli or Alpha xyz they're <laughs> they're from wherever god wants them to be at the time wherever he's put them and and they are under our feet 
I mean, I keep, I've been, uh, was watching a show with my husband because they're all scuba divers about a trench in the Atlantic Ocean, not the Mariana Trench, but another one that's something like 25,000 feet deep. Wow. And that's a ton of Empire State buildings stacked on top of each other. If the ocean's that deep, imagine how much you could fit under our feet in the earth. Yeah, we have These no idea. These underground systems I was in were massive. Wow. Massive. There's just, we have no idea what's going on under our own feet. So, you know, you're going through all this. And then there's a moment of time, and this is what's so incredible about what Jesus can do. And and folks, we're not talking religion here. I mean, this isn't going to church or lighting some candles. This is this is gut wrenching. This is visceral. You are being kidnapped, abducted, and and raped. Whether you're a male or female, that's what's going on. And you know they'll, as you're being probed and stuff. Usually one of them will be over your, it's okay, don't struggle, we're not here to hurt you. Lie, 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 lie. They lie and do so habitually. So tell us, without giving, you know, the punchline away completely, but, you know, you're free. And mm -hmm. how did that happen? Yeah, and this is this is a part of the book I will happily give away for each, anyone who wants to listen, because that freedom is, like I said, they have the same creator we do. And... You know, once I realized that and realized in my heart that, you know, they had to listen if I called on Jesus, if I called on God to help me, and that's all it took. And it didn't mean I had to go to the right church. It didn't mean I had to read my Bible so many hours a day and memorize so many scriptures or do this and that and the other thing. It did not come with those kinds of limitations. It came with knowing in my heart that Jesus is my Lord and Savior, that he loves me and wants to protect me and save me. And as soon as I got that, I didn't even have to say it out loud. I could think it, I could feel it in my heart. I could say it out loud, whatever form it came from, from me, they reacted, they responded. You know, they don't come into my home anymore. Yeah, they still try to come at me. They still try to, to get me to come back. They still try to take me, but they can't cross the threshold. They're outside the window sometimes, right. they're out. I can feel them close by, but whenever that happens, I get on my knees, I pray, and I know I'm okay. And I pray before I go to bed that they don't trick me or try to mess with me anymore, and and I'm good. They have not been able to take me since then, and they will not be able to take me again. Amen. Not against my will and Amen. not against God's will. Amen. Folks, uh, that's that's the book is incredible, and um, we've got a great deal, Stolen Seed, Evil Harvest, and um, we're going to give away um, my book, uh, 70 Years Right There, UFO Disclosure. So it's, you know, it's you're getting... Look at yeah, that. Yeah, there you go. So <laughs> you're, you're, it's a great deal, lamarzulli.net, lamarzulli.net. John, John Adam will put that up there, and uh, uh, we'll be shipping that off to you. Karen, I'll give you the last word, and thanks so much for your boldness. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you. No, thank you so much. You know, the last word is just, you're not alone. If there's anyone out there who has this going on, go to my website. It's karenwilkinsonauthor.com. You can reach out to me through the website. You can find me on social media under my name, Karen Wilkinson, Karen with an I. You can find the book exclusively on L.A. Marzulli's website here, lamarzulli.net. And just know you're not alone and that you don't have to put up with this type of an evil invasion in your life, that you have a choice and you can stop it. God is there for you and he's listening for you to call his name. And there you have it, folks, Karen Wilkinson, Stolen Seed, Evil Harvest. And uh, you'll also get my book for free. So it's, it's time. We're trying to get the word out because this is very important. It ties right into Daniel 2, verse 43. Their seed will mingle with the seed of men, but there's no marriage. They will not cleave to them. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, UFOs are real, burgeoning, not going away. We have... Um, basically 10 films. Eight of them are available right now on those. And the two new ones, of course, are the Roswell films. So there you go. Lots of material, lots of things to talk about. Karen, thanks so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, LA. Have a blessed rest of your day. I appreciate you so much. You too. Folks, UFOs are real birth shooting and not going away. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.
Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile, found sometime last week, has been inspected at Roswell, New Mexico, and sent to Wright Field, Ohio, for further inspection. Late this afternoon, a bulletin from New Mexico suggested that the widely publicized mystery of the flying saucers may soon be solved. Army Air Force officers reported that one of the strange discs had been found and inspected sometime last week. Our correspondents in Los Angeles and Chicago have been in contact with Army officials endeavoring to obtain all possible late information. Joe Wilson reports to us now from Chicago. The Army may be getting to the bottom of all this talk about the so-called flying saucers. As a matter of fact, the 509th Atomic Bomb Group headquarters at Roswell, New Mexico, reports that it has received one of the discs which landed on a ranch outside Roswell. The disc landed at a ranch at Corona, New Mexico, and the rancher turned it over to the Air Force. Rancher W.W. W. Brizel was the man who discovered the saucer. Colonel William Blanchard of the Roswell Air Base refuses to give details of what the flying disc looks like.